building on stuff plus, which measures the value of a pitch uh, based on only the characteristics of ball flight without knowing the end location. So the spin rate, uh, the break profile, the velocity, the release point, uh, we've seen those models kind of reach a plateau in how they've done. Um, anyone that watches pitching or anyone who watches baseball can recognize a pitcher who is crafty or knows what they're doing is using a certain pitch to set up another pitch later. Uh, like Greg Maddox, uh, the professor is not a nickname you get on accident. Um, so, Merrick, do you want to kind of tell people about how you started testing that theory with our arsenal models? It's um, it's part of a constant exercise of of putting labels to the residuals that explain player performance in different ways. And um, as you said, stuff was kind of the first building block, the first known contributor to uh, pitch quality. Um, and overall pitcher quality. And as we went further down the chain, um, started with command, and not to say that all these things are fully explained by it means, there's still a lot to say about stuff. There's still a lot to say about command, which we'll get into a little bit here too. Um, the interaction of one pitch with another um, was kind of an open-ended problem that we wanted to uh, dive into. And so um, it's it's the sort of thing that you can, as you said, generate hypotheses just by watching the game and 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 listening to to color from the broadcast or even listen to players talk about. You know, I wanted to add this pitch to my arsenal. Maybe it was because I was looking at a movement plot and realized that you know the uh, the the coverage on this plane was was not exactly what it needed to be, and so um, let me find a way to add um, this to my mix. And hopefully that generates better results. So uh, we wanted to take things a step further and uh, derive some methods on how we could evaluate whether or not um, you were adding to your arsenal. And that's especially interesting these days when uh, year of the mix seems to be the talk of the town on Twitter uh, and such. Um, we have tools now for evaluating, like, are you being constructive? Are you uh, doing something that that, again, uh, contributes to your performance in a meaningful way, or um, is this all kind of superfluous? And I think, and I think, it, oh, sorry, you got Lambo. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, we talk about these at a high level, and it can sound like they're kind of abstract, but uh, the trends in the game have really followed this modeling uh, kind of influx that we've seen. In that, what was it, two years ago, it was the sweeper. That was the craze. Everyone's throwing that that sweeper and if you look back on the people who had stuff models two years ago sweeper was by far the best pitch year after that it's the splitter splitter rates did they double last year it went from something like one and a half to three percent or something um that was a filthy stuff plus pitch by that uh and you see over the course of this tying in with arsenal models the usage of three fastballs using a four seam sinker and cutter has skyrocketed it's this uh in which is i think is a combination of both stuff plus and uh arsenal effects so from the stuff perspective we know that sinkers to opposite hand hitters uh are not going to be generally speaking super effective we know that cutters to opposite hand hitter opposite hand hitters are uh people are optimally using their fastballs pitch design is getting better and you can kind of parlay those multiple pitches into more ways you can attack a guy uh basing on our our arsenal models and what pitches are setting up other pitches uh so it can be abstract to talk about this stuff, but it is truly happening at like on the ground floor of what's happening in MLB. And I think it's I think it's important to recognize that this isn't a uh, uh, this isn't a this isn't a static problem to solve. Mm -hmm. um, if, for example, pitchers recognize that there's this market inefficiency where throwing a bunch of sweepers ends up getting a lot of results because batters haven't seen that shape before. Um, and as the years go on, batters start seeing more and more of this the sweeper shape in something we probably call or Merrick would call like league league level familiarity. Um, as the league starts throwing more and more sweepers, batters start experiencing it more and more, and batters start becoming more familiar with it. Um, and the effectiveness of those sweepers go down. You see the same thing with four seam four seam fastballs at the top of the zone, which were extremely effective a few years ago, are are getting slightly less effective. Um, and sinkers are making a bit of a comeback. And it's it's this constant um, I want to say chess match, which is which is funny because one of the uh, the initial analogies that Merrick gave um, when we were talking about uh, Arsenal scores is this concept from chess where bishop, bishops and knights are both worth about three pawns. Um, but what people have noticed is that 
um, what elite high level chess players have known intuitively and then backed up by some of these computer engines that are used in chess now um, is that both bishops together uh, tend to outperform a bishop and a knight or two knights together. So there's this additive, additive effect beyond just the raw value of the piece. And um, people who have played baseball a long time kind of intuitively know this as well with with uh, you see you know certain pitches playing off each other well basically exactly what you said lambo these these greg maddox types from history that um can play play pitches off uh off each other really well this idea of tunneling that's existed for the last few years um and now in the same way that the chess engines kind of confirm the intuition of high level grandmasters um, we're noticing that our models are confirming the intuition of high level coaches and pitchers um and so that's where we see these these residuals of stuff residuals of our pitching models being explained by um by these arsenal effects that we're noticing and and certain pitch types um for example you know cutters being used as a quote-unquote bridge pitch um actually increase the uh, could uh, potentially increase the efficacy of a sweeper and a sinker uh, paired with it um so i think it's 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 pretty cool seeing uh seeing that effect and i'm sure that the batters are going to end up adjusting a different way and then pitchers are going to adjust again uh it's just this constant back and forth of of figuring out market inefficiencies on both sides and, and having an adjustment. And to tie back to how are we able to take advantage of the fact of driveline setup as this facility that brings together an R&D team, baseball ops team, and say a pitching floor, um, it's really easy for, say, the three of us to get on a Zoom and shoot the breeze for an hour and a half about arsenal metrics and theories and ideas that sound really good from an analyst's perspective obviously Hedgka is more than an analyst and can bridge a gap for us but yeah i'm an intern dude yeah right yeah. right right more yeah, you're the analyst, you're the I'm lead intern. intern the lead <laughs> senior, <laughs> senior intern um we can take that you know all these ideas and and also float them uh by our trainers um uh, who can then kind of uh test out some of the ideas be a sounding board for us uh um, again, taking some of the intuition that they've developed by working with guys that have these problems that um, can then narrow our focus on what exactly are we trying to solve. It, it's um, I, I can't imagine just being um, isolated from from you know real players and, and, and being in a real environment, just like again banging out code, and this becomes not really a baseball problem when you get too far removed from the actual game. And Driveline does a good job of keeping it all under one roof. And yeah, even just thinking like of this basic example of like, you know, pitch design and models, right? So like if you have really, if you have access to really good models, but you don't have access to like a really good pitching department or pitch design department, um, it's really hard to make those models actionable for yourself, right? Mm. So you can know that this particular shape is, is, um, is something that you should pursue or like adding this pitch is important. But if you don't have a good coach who's able to break down those concepts, communicate them to you and then teach you how to actually, how to actually throw that pitch um there there's like having those models in isolation just is very very difficult to apply on the opposite end if you have access to really good training but you don't have access to really good models maybe you have a, po a coach who's really good at communicating information um it might be the wrong have these models yeah say that again it might be the wrong information i mean you're going off your the, coach yeah it might be the wrong information and there's no there's no way to quantify or like get feedback mm -hmm. um and it's it it's more so I view the models as kind of like a guide or like a map in the in the process. And it, it helps you know where to look. It might not give you the complete answer, but it helps you very strongly narrow down where to look. A hundred percent. And those two just gel really well together. Basically, even this basic example of just like pitch models and pitch design. I think there's just a really, really big additive effect, kind of like the two bishops. Yeah. Kind of like a cutter and a sweeper. Um, it's, yeah. It's the same thing in our department. No, it was uh, really cool this year to uh stuff plus and command plus location plus have previously influenced our pitch designs but uh this year specifically a few conversations with trainers were really cool to have uh conversations on i have these two options for a stuff uh a stuff plus gainer but what's going to fit best in the arsenal so seeing these in action of really getting granular with like do we want to increase stuff plus do we want to increase uh whiffs in certain counts do we want to increase chases uh Having the arsenal model contact pitch, yeah, exactly. Like, like we know that uh, mix and match are the name of the models, uh, and we know that they correlate to whiff rates and swing rates. Uh, so using those, we were able to give uh, recommendations that 
off first glance from spring training seem to be solid that, uh, yeah, that this may work to accomplish what we want in getting these uh, chases on two strikes or uh, kind of this shock factor type pitch that will uh, be taken by the batter almost certainly. Uh, that'd be like your Kershaw curveball or a sweeper if everything's going east-west or mainly just west and you need something to go east. Uh, yeah, but um, no, it, it's really cool to see him tied back to earth and it's this is not a claim that uh baseball has been solved uh it's like merrick said not a static issue it is totally dynamic but hoping that we can stay ahead of that curve uh as we continue to develop on them 